Hello fellow orchid lovers, it's Danielle here with a video about how my experiment orchids are going. I wanted to give you a brief update on how my experiment orchids are going because I haven't updated you in a while and things are going pretty well. Uh, there were a few new types of orchids that I added to my care. There were a few new ways of growing that we were trying and then there was a personal challenge for myself to see if I could grow in traditional media. So let's start with that because that's the, that's the aspect that I failed in. So if you'll remember, I had this um, Phaeus and she came to me in moss and I was going to keep her in moss and I failed to do that. <laughs> She's been crossed over to my version of semi-hydro for a few months now, actually. And the reason why I transferred her over is her leaves started to die back pretty severely. Um, she was starting to get, um, you can see here a little bit of it. She was starting to get this, but it was taking over her leaves completely and they were turning yellow uh, with this darker markings. And uh, she actually lost a total of three leaves that way. And so that put me into a little bit of a panic mode because I'm, I'm new to this type of orchid and I didn't want to lose her. Um, and usually whatever I keep in traditional media like bark or moss dies on me. So a couple of months ago, I decided to just switch her over to my version of semi-hydro and I did and I also moved her. So she doesn't grow here in the orchid room anymore. She grows with my Miltoniopsis on uh, my windowsill in my bathroom. And I don't know if it's the transfer to the semi-hydro or if it's the transfer to a different growing environment, but the browning of the leaves has stopped and it's been good now since I transferred her. So she seems to be doing okay. Uh, her roots are still pretty healthy. You can see that there's some green roots there. Um, you know, they all look to be pretty healthy. She had some brown kind of crappy roots in the middle. And I kind of just left them intact if they weren't completely mushy. So you can see she has a little growing tip there. Um, and as you can see, I kept this very, very loose. Um, I did some more research on this particular plant and apparently they grow in uh, somewhat boggy conditions. So I didn't want, and the, the, the media that they usually are grown in and also the type of um, conditions they're grown in, it's not like really compacted uh, media. It's kind of more light and airy, that's the recommendation. So. I didn't want to pack her in and kind of suffocate her roots. So this is this is how she is. I um, Once a week, I bring the water all the way up to the top of this microfiber and I let her sit in water for about 20 minutes. And then I drain most of it off. You see there's some water here, but it's actually trapped in between the two glasses. So the actual water level is all the way down here. So it doesn't even really touch her roots. It's just to keep the microfiber moist so that there is humidity in the glass and she seems pretty happy i have to say um like i said no more dieback on her leaves um no signs of a spike or anything and her new growths have basically kind of just stalled um so i don't know you know if she's going to pick up or what she's going to do but she's not dying actively actually this new growth down here that looks like it's doing something that was not like that a couple days ago so she's not actively dying, so that's good. But I did fail to keep her in traditional media. I got freaked out and I moved her <laughs> to my version of semi-hydro, so. Um, and then the other one that I was going to try to keep in traditional media was my um, vanilla plant. I failed as far as that's concerned as well. She has also been, that's the vase back there, I realize you don't know that. Um, she has also been in my version of semi-hydro for a few months now. Um, and again, uh, she was doing fine. There was nothing indicating whether or not um, she didn't like it. You know, I would just water her once a week. She was in mostly bark. Um, it was very fine bark. But again, not knowing what was going on inside the pot was really freaking me out. 
and she kept tipping over because the pot was really light and she was just getting heavier and heavier. As you can see, she has just grown into quite a monster. So um, I switched her over and I haven't been able to share that with you until now. But as you can see, she is still growing root tips, her leaves, everything's very healthy, no desiccation of any of her, um, any part of her, none of the vine is, is desiccating and she continues to grow, grow, grow. I mean, she was probably half this size when I got her and she just continues to grow. And then, you know, if you look back here, if I can get you back there without knocking anything over, she has active root tips growing. You can see them right there. She has active root tips growing down into the water. So I would say she's pretty happy. So those are my failures. Um, I really couldn't stick with it. Uh, I had I had to just change them because, you know, I, I really am quite a failure as far as growing in, in traditional media or organic media. So I just I just transitioned them to my version of semi hydro and so far so good. So hopefully um, they will continue to be happy. Um, the other ones that are in my version of semi hydro are my zygopetalum and my two pathiopetalums, which are also doing really well. Uh, so this pathiopetalum, when we first got her, she just had a tiny new growth. The growth is continuing to mature. Um, so that's really good. She does have some root tips, some new root tips down in the glass. I'm going to see if I can find them for you. There they are. So as you can see, these older roots have pushed out new root tips. So she seems to be pretty happy. I do flush the pots pretty regularly because I've heard that they don't like um, a buildup of salt. They like pretty, pretty clean environment. So I do flush them pretty regularly and I don't fertilize them very heavy. Um, it looks like she has bloomed in the past. So I'm really hoping that this fan will potentially put out a bloom for me, but I don't know. I think she might be slightly off season. I think if she was gonna bloom, uh, sh this fan should be a little more mature. Uh, but I could be wrong. I'm very new to the whole pathiopetalum side of things, but she's doing well, and that is all that I care about. Same thing with this. Uh, this one, she was the single fan when I got her, I believe. I don't think she had any other fans. I think it was just a single fan. And um, she did drop one leaf uh, since I got her, but she has continued to grow more leaves. So she's doing really well. Uh, no signs of any problems so far. She seems healthy and as vigorous as a pathiopetalum can be because they don't grow very fast um, as most or orchids you'll find. I mean, some orchids grow fast, but a lot of them grow very slowly. As far as her roots are concerned, um, she out of the two had, the, had less of a root system. Uh, that one had a pretty extensive root system and this one had not as good of a root system. I don't see any growing tips, um, but her roots are still there and they are firm. So they're not dying back, which is good. So, and a lot of the activity on the roots could be inside that I just don't see. Um, and again, I don't keep a lot of water in here. I just keep enough to really touch those microfiber cloths and keep them moist for the orchid. And then my zygopetalum is doing really well too. I'm, I'm really shocked and very excited. So it has finally grown its suitable. It took a little while to grow its suitable. And uh, the new growth is progressing really, really well. No dieback or anything yet. Um, she also has a bunch of new roots. So you can see right here, one of the old roots that died, but then she has a new root growing right there. So that's really good. And she has a couple more. You can see there's a green root there. And then there's some more green roots growing down there. So she's she seems happy. Um, no signs of any problems yet. So I'm hoping, you know, to keep her happy as well. Very similar to these. I just rinse her really good. I make sure I try to keep the pot as clean as possible and, uh, you know, flush it really well every week and then just give a little bit of fertilized water um, nothing too heavy, not too much fertilizer. And I give her really good light. Like she, this is where she lives. So she gets, um, you know, this grow light directly on her. And she also lives near the humidifier. So very moist, bright situation for her. And I think she's really enjoying it. 
Um, my two Phalaenopsis that I'm just doing in well water, um, it's this one right here. Let me try to get you back in there. So it's this one right here. Uh, she's doing really good. Um, no signs of spikes or anything, but her roots are doing really well. No signs of dieback or any negative um, results of just using well water and no fertilizer. And then the other one is this one back here. I probably should have taken these guys down. Um, it's that one back there. And she has a spike, as you can see, nice, big, long spike. So even though I'm just giving her well water and I'm not giving her any fertilized water, she is still spiking. And she is also growing roots and a new leaf. So, so far it looks like well water is possibly sufficient um, for the Phalaenopsis. But again, it's a little too early to say because she's only been growing in well water for a couple months now. And then the final update is gonna be um, my mounts. So if you'll remember, uh, there were a few orchids that I knew would prefer to grow um, on a mount instead of in media or in like a pod or something like, or upright. So I kind of came up with this type of mount where I just took microfiber and I braided it around their root system and then hung it, hung it into a reservoir of water just to keep the microfiber damp, but not like wringing wet. And it, it works, it does. Um, as you can see, um, this one is my Victoria Regine. I know a lot of people call it Regina, but I don't. It's, um, to me, that's the proper pronunciation. But um, the one came went leafless, and now this is the um, new growth. And as you can see, it's growing new roots. It continues to put out new leaves, so it's doing really well. So this method does seem to work. Uh, same thing with my pendulum. The pendulum's doing really well. Uh, no new roots per se as such, but um, the keiki that was growing on this cane when I got it did put out some roots and the keiki has matured. And as you can see, she is blooming for me. Well, she's not blooming, but she's got buds. So hopefully these will open soon and I'll be able to share them with you. But I don't love this. Um, I just feel like it's just, a, it stays a little too damp. And then when it does dry out, it dries out like quick. So I don't, I don't love it. And then I also feel like, I don't like growing in organic media because I feel like things have an opportunity to get kind of yucky and musty like really quickly. And I feel like this is the same thing. So I don't love it. So I'm probably gonna try to come up with something different. Um, but right now it's working until I'm able to kind of brainstorm and come up with something different. It is working, they are growing, they seem to be happy. You know, we have some some buds here and then we have a new growth here and some new roots. So I think that they're, in the main, they're happy, but I'm not happy, I don't like it. Um, I have a very like OCD, everything needs to be like clean and tidy and this just bothers me, so it's probably not going to stay this way forever. But overall, everything that uh, was a quote unquote experiment is doing really well. So I wanted to share that with you. There's so much going on in the grow room this season. I have so many Phalaenopsis spikes coming. I'm really excited to, to share that with you. Uh, my Saiku Marguerite complete bloom now. I mean, those spikes are insane. Um, my eye candy, penny candy, as you can see, she's starting to finish up here. She's got two more blooms coming, but that is an extensive spike. That is all one spike. So that is, you know, the best she's ever done. Um, I have some more spikes coming on my Shari Baby. Um, this Shari Baby, the spike has stuck around for a while. I have a ton of Latoria spikes coming. You can see back there my um, microchip. So I have a lot to share with you in the coming weeks. Oh, I have a new bloom, which I'll try to share with you in another video, but my um, my new Phalaenopsis, the cross that I wasn't sure what it was gonna look like, it's the Miney Eye Black um, crossed with Pink Girl. She opened, if I can get my hands on this. So there she is, that's what she looks like. She's really pretty. She's got the star shape of the Miney Eye Black and then the spots from the pretty um, Pink Girl, I'm sorry. 
and I don't know if you can see, but she's got like a little bit of like a hairy pink lip there. No fragrance yet. These blooms have only been open for a couple of days, so I'm hoping a fragrance comes with time, um, but there's no fragrance yet. So I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, Shilleriana spike is continuing to grow. So we've got a lot of really cool things coming up that we're gonna share with you when they're, when they're open. I hope you guys are all having a good week so far. Uh, we're supposed to get a pretty significant snowstorm here tomorrow. So hopefully anyone that lives in the uh, Northeast is gonna be nice and safe tomorrow. And uh, I will talk to you all next time.